In this video, we will look at an example of calculating beta in R. Um, this is a very simple example and it will introduce a few concepts like setting up a vector of values, which is a sequence, um, using a for loop to do your calculations, and then also how to co combine different vectors into a matrix. So we'll start with our R code. Um, the problem we're going to look at is a problem in your textbook, so question 10 in chapter 9, where we looked at the uh, prothrombin uh, levels in patients uh, in their blood. And we said there that our data has a mean of 20 and a variance of um, a standard deviation of 4. And there's a whole bunch of information here. So first thing we would want to do is to just go and make a summary of that data and enter that data. So let's add that summary in here. I'm just going to type in all of the given information. So we've given here that the hypothesized mean is 20 or the mean under the null. Then we have a standard deviation of four, which is sigma. In this case, it's not based on sample data. It is based on population data. And then we also know that we are dealing with a sample of size 20. Then next we can use this to calculate our standard error, which I'm just going to call SE. And this is sigma over the square root of uh, N. And then the last bit of information that we're given is our cutoff point. So we're going to do this test uh, using X bar as our test statistic. And our cutoff point is given in the textbook as 17.92. Um, so I'm just going to enter that as well. Now, the first thing we want to do if we want to calculate beta, you will have seen in the textbook, you only do it there for one specific value of beta. Uh, you don't do it for a whole range of values. And now we're going to extend that so that we can easily do this calculation for a whole range of values. So I'll do that by first creating a vector of my values under the alternative that I'm interested in. And I'm going to call it mu a just because why not? So that vector has to have the values we specified here as 15 up to 19.9. .9, and you can see it's each time at intervals of 0 0.1. So for that, we can use the sequence function in R. And as always, if you're interested in the function, you want to know more about it, press uh, or just type question mark and that function name and you will get a description here. So it tells you here from, to, and by are your arguments, and you can read all about it in here. So we want to go here from 15 up to 19.9, .9, and we want to do it at intervals of 0 0.1. So if I run this code so far, I'm just going to highlight all of this and press Control Enter, and we can see here in our environment that we've created all of these objects or variables, whatever we want to call them, and we've created mu8. So I didn't print it out. So let's say I want to just go double check that everything is fine. And I encourage you guys to do this. Whenever you do a calculation, you might not always want to print it out. So that's why I'm not putting the round brackets around it. I don't want to print it every single time. But if I wanted to just go and check it, I can type it in the console. So that's gone once we close R. And you can see it's that exactly what I wanted it to do. So then next, we want to, um, sorry, I think you see I wrote that in the wrong place. I actually want to put it over there. So um, that's just part of our instructions. Now we want to calculate beta. So you can't calculate beta if you don't know how to calculate it. So whenever you're coding, don't start with just typing your code in. If you don't know how to solve the problem, you're not going to be able to do it. So start with a piece of paper or something like a piece of paper and just go write down all of the information that you have. So I see my um, text here has moved to the side. Let's see if I can get that back. It doesn't seem to want to come back. So we said there um, just what the distribution is. So let me actually just write that again. Um, we have here under the null hypothesis, that X bar has an approximate normal distribution with mean 20 and our variance is 4 over root N, which is 20 also, all of that squared. So that's what I have there. And my rejection region, we know here that that's just 
we will reject the null if x bar is uh, less or equal to that 17.92. Okay, now if we want to calculate beta, like I said, you need a formula. So beta is just the probability of the type 2 error, which is the probability that we do not reject the null given the alternative is true. Now in this case, what not rejecting the null means is the probability that x bar is greater than 17.92. And under the alternative, let's just say this will be for mu equal to mu prime. And we've told you in the other videos that mu prime will be given. So here I'm keeping it very general because I want to go and do this calculation for multiple values. So I'm going to keep it as mu prime here. Now, if I want to calculate this probability, all I need to do is calculate 1 minus the probability that x bar is less um, or equal to 17.92. And actually, that's um, less or equal doesn't even matter because we're working with continuous variables. And we still know that this is under the alternative that mu is equal to mu prime. Now, there's more than one way to approach this in R. Um, so you could go, if you wanted to do this by hand, you would have gone now and standardized and you would have said, so this is just one minus the probability that X bar minus mu um, prime over sigma over root n is less or equal to 17.92 minus mu prime, whatever value we need to substitute in there, over sigma over root n. So we have those values there. So what we end up here with is actually 1 minus phi, so that cumulative normal probability um, of 17.92 minus mu prime over sigma over root n. So we would just substitute in there. Now, you could also, using R, just go to this step directly. You don't need to go all the way here. Your choice how you code it. So I would actually encourage you guys to go and try and code it in this manner as well. The only difference would be here in this first step, we would actually just type in the 20 and the, or sorry, not the 20, the, the mu prime value, and then the um, give the standard deviation that we've specified up there. In the second case, we are working with a standard normal. So you would then specify your mean and standard deviation differently. So that's pretty much what we are going to try and do. Now, first thing I'm going to do before I can do this calculation is I'm going to create a vector or just an object, let's call it an object, which is completely empty. So I'm creating that so that I have somewhere to store my answers. And then I'm going to use what we call a for loop. So we can again go here in our console and go and look at the for loop and see what the syntax is. So let's see if we do it like that. You can see there it tells you a little bit about for loops. So for loops are quite useful. They do use a little bit of computational power, but for what we're doing, it shouldn't be too much. So when we want to use this for loop, I'm going to say, I'm going to start with something called I. You can write any letter you want here, J, K, A, B, anything you want. And that just takes it through. So it's going to start I on a value of one and then go up to whatever we specify. So here I might want to specify, I want to go through mu a, so I need the length of a. So if we check here using the length function, always just make sure that it works. It doesn't always work, but let's just say mu a. There we know that it's 50 observations. So we know we can use this as our upper limit. We can see also here that there's 50 observations. So I can say go paste i from 1 up to 50. And then everything that happens in these brackets will be done for each value of i. So that just means that I can now say my value at yi, so when i is 1, it will be the first value. If i is 10, it will be the 10th value and so on. So yi is going to be equal to 1 minus, and now we know that this probability we want to calculate is just a normal probability, or it's from a normal distribution. So I'm going to use my p norm function. And 
we know the value that needs to be standardized is actually that critical value. So that's what we see over here. We want to standardize the critical value. So that's the first argument I'm going to put in here. And then I can just tell it what my mean and standard deviation is. So this is going to be my value under the alternative at i. So you can see here this value yi is actually just my beta value um, for each of these values of the mean under the alternative. So it's going to scroll through them and do this calculation at each point. And then my standard deviation is just the standard error that I've calculated. So remember that standard error. The deviation that we input here is supposed to be for the variable we're working with. So we're not putting sigma because we're not standardizing just using sigma. We need to actually go and calculate the standard error because we're working with x bar here. So that is then my um, next step. And if I run this, you'll see if I run that first line, that just creates an object y which has nothing in it. Now when I calculate this or run this loop, you can see I have a value or a vector y, which has 50 observations in it. And those are all my beta probabilities. And in your practical, you will see that we actually show you what a plot of that. So if we look here, you should be able to now do this plot. And notice I haven't given it appropriate labels or a title. That is something we will always expect of you to do. So make sure you understand what is going into the plot so that you can name it appropriately. So just a reminder, if you want to go and check how to do this, just type question mark plot, and that will bring up this window here. And you can see here with the generic XY plotting that's in the base function, you click there, and it will take you through all the different arguments and what to do. So it shows you what types of plots you can do, what symbols to use and all of that. So this I'm going to leave for homework for you guys. So just going to comment this out. Rather not have this in your script when you submit, if you uh, do question mark things or you put a view function in, just comment it out because it might um, cause issues with the auto grader. And then the last thing I want to show you is just how do we now combine these? So we have two vectors here, one with our values of the mean, one with our values of beta. And let's say we want to combine them. I'm going to combine them into a matrix called mat beta. And for that, we use the cbind function. There's also an rbind function. So cbind combines two columns or multiple columns. You can combine as many as you want. rbind will do multiple rows. And what I want to combine here are my mu values and my beta values, which I just called y here. So if I run that code, we can go and view this and I'm doing it in the console so I don't accidentally forget that in here. So if we write here mu um, view of mat beta and we run that, it opens the data set for us. And if you go back to the question in your textbook, I believe it was a value uh, under the alternative of 16.7 you had to consider. And you'll see that this beta value is actually very close to what you had there. The only difference comes in with the fact that there you maybe did the calculation by hand. So you're going to have a difference in the fourth decimal. Um, and that's pretty much everything for today.